<laughs> oh god okay welcome to the atlanta warrior podcast um, <laughs> bless you and bless our audience that's the stupidest thing I could that, that was a pretty, yeah, yeah. How long have you had that bit prepared? Uh, I've had it for a while. Was it, the, was it during the five con- countdown that I did? Uh, it was. Okay. I, I was really, I was prepping that thing. Somewhere around number three? It. Yeah. You're like, what if I just sneeze? Look, there the was this, this sneeze guard was right here, and I was just like, I gotta use this. We got sneeze guards. We do. It. Yeah, and we have, we're We've back been in the, We're back in the studio. <laughs> we are! We're standing up in the studio. Yeah, and most of the panels are replaced. Most of the panels are replaced. Uh, the AC works. It is, it kind is of. struggling. It's, it's because it's trying 90 thousand degrees outside right now uh although it's only only 89 degrees right now it's only 89, only 89 degrees. and a humidity of 200 yeah. percent. so yeah uh but we're back we're in the only studio. nine degrees off of a boy band oh f- thank goodness <laughs> the one that no one remembers <laughs> yeah, i remember NSYNC and backstreet and everybody remembers no one remembers that remember uh aaron carter he was a guy yes for a i while. do yeah he was like a beaver before there was a beaver the, the, the leaf singer old... 98 degrees was once been jessica simpson and then she talked about tuna yeah, and yeah. she wasn't sure if it was a if it was you know a chicken or part of the ocean. Yeah, is it a fish? Is, is it, it a fish? chicken? Is it chicken? Yeah. I remember that's when we a thought... very old joke that a lot of our listeners probably have no idea about because that's American pop culture things. <laughs> that's the things. That's the type of things that we remember. That's true. And uh, hey, that's a great lead into our new segment that we're gonna do after we uh, new thank our segment time. New oh. segment time. Oh. I didn't have a. <laughs> I don't know what to do at the end of that. Uh, we got to do a we'll do a clean take of that later, so we can just play that, and then we yeah. can play it multiple times. Right. Just it, it, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that, cut it, uh-huh. and then we're just gonna do this every time, and then we're just gonna loop it back over itself, and so it's just eventually. <laughs> it's, it's off by a millisecond <laughs> every single <laughs> every time. Every single time. So it's just, <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. So put a phaser on it, so it's like. <laughs> yeah. This is cool. Pew, this pew, is. Pew, pew. You know, our new segment is how many new listeners we picked up, and I feel like we're going to defeat the purpose of that by just driving them all away. Just losing um, them immediately. But hey, what show is this? Who? This is the Atlanta Warrior Podcast. Oh. And I'm Josh. And I'm Zach. And welcome to this podcast. Yeah, about sorry. About miniature figures that we play sometimes with games yeah. uh, that involve Warhammer and mostly Age of Sigmar. And it's a mostly Age of Sigmar podcast, but that doesn't really mean that we talk about Age of Sigmar really all that much at all. No, in fact, we've kind of been faffing about for fourth ed- until 4th edition hit because we had nothing to really talk about. And now we have a <laughs> bunch of things to talk about again, uh, including so, continuously pushing off a Skaven and a Sylvaneth review for another three years, baby. Let's do it. it. We're never doing it. Never doing it. Never doing it. Three more years. No, we'll probably do three the Skaven. more years. The Skaven won Hell's Crown, which, by the way, can I get it? Can I aside Skaven players? You can uh, absolutely I, aside Skaven players. I, I want to be. I want to be honest. Fan base, you can be honest with us. How many of you bought that box and just went and logged in a Skaven win? Because let's I be. And I, I don't hate it. Because uh, if they had showed me ten new Stormcast models, I would have been very sad. I would have had to mortgage a second baby. So, like, please, that's fine that they let Skaven have it. Skaven needed the line refresh. They. Some of those models were older than the people who... They were older than the people playing them. They belonged to their fathers that they bought when they came out in, like, 1980. So, <clears throat> I'm totally and fine. And their fathers before them. They've been passing down these globe ideas, just so like Christopher Walken in Pulp Fiction. One Skaven will come back to the forefront, I hit to the tables, and you, my grandson, you will lead them to victory. You will roll 2d6 and blow yourself up and laugh and feel bad. I hid this warp fire thrower in the only place I had during the war. It's a my butt. <laughs> it's a, oh God! Yeah, uh, don't please don't do that, uh, Warhammer people at home. Oh, uh, don't lead poisoning. Will you be, know yeah, don't boof a warp done, fire you know thrower. You've done it. Don't lie to us. Not with a warp fire you, thrower. You can. Yeah, it's just well, all. We already pointy. know that you've already tried it. I you, mean, you've looked at that thing up. sitting on the shelf, and you've gone, "Hmm, I'm gonna lube that warp fire up." <laughs> I may have been, listen, just because on my spreadsheet of models I own, there is a but question mark column with a yes or no in it. I, don't worry about that. Don't worry about it. Okay? Don't worry about it. Theory is not practice. That's all I'm saying. Theory is not practice. Um, and that's why we're standing up on this show. So. Correlation doesn't necessarily mean causation, but... Oh, man, that is causing me to uh, clench my butt cheeks. Oh, yes, goodness, goodness. Um, so, yeah, I, I want to know how many people actually went and played the box like you're supposed to against each other and, and then turned in the results. Uh, and I'll be honest, I didn't. Mm. I haven't built any of that box. I have been building nine different spearheads for that spearhead tournament. Uh, details coming soon. Keep an eye on the website that we're doing. AtlantaWarhammer.com. Yeah, and uh, I have been doing um, a lot of work on that, and I keep looking over at my new Stormcast, and I'm like, someday. And then right next to that box, I have put the box of Sacrosanct that I've never painted that now I have a year. And then next to that is the box of all the other ones I have painted that are still legal, unpainted, and I was like... Man, I might have too many Stormcasts. So I'm okay that yeah. they didn't show me 10 new Stormcasts. Like, this, is, this is actually an intervention. This I, whole this show should have been an intervention. I should have been stopped years ago. 
And now you're too strong and too powerful. Oh, no, no, we have too, too many, many listeners. Too many Stormcasts. Too many people depend on me. If, if one more person comes up to me and is like, hey, I like the show, and I, and I don't recognize them, which is always <laughs> awesome, by the way. Keep doing that. It's great. It's a great feeling to be like, oh, weird. Uh, and shout out to the, to the guy that works at Mr. Car Wash that listens to our show <laughs> that somehow recognized me from the store and then the show when I was driving through the car wash, which is awesome. Um, I have to keep up the habit for them, Josh. Yeah. I'm, doing, I'm doing this for them. This it's is not for, for me. This is for you people. This is for them. You people out there. You, we do this for you. You people. Uh, and you want to know who some of these people are? I would love to. You want to do the should we do sponsors and then the new listeners? No, segment? let's do listeners first. Yeah. Listeners are more important. Than listeners sponsors. are more fuck important. Sponsors. sponsors. They haven't given us money in years. <laughs> and last last time we did fuck the sponsors. <laughs> well, one of them. We murdered and ki- uh, killed the other one. Uh, okay, so this is a new segment. Uh huh. New segment time. See, they're gonna think new that was segment oh, time. Fuck, I talked over it. I'm sorry. I forgot there was a, a stinger to it. Yeah. I was gonna say they're gonna think that's a, a recording we already did. Um, we have three new. Listen. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you the new listeners we have. By the way, Josh doesn't know what I have written on his I note card. No he, I have a note card of a bunch of stuff written on it, and he doesn't know. He has the fear <clears> in his the hand, eyes. And the handwriting is so bad that I couldn't read it even if I tried. I barely can. <laughs> uh, and I misspelled the last I misspelled the last country with, by using an M instead of an A for its first letter for some reason. I did this in a hurry. It didn't. <laughs> I'll pronounce it the way I wrote it first, and Perfect. then we'll, we'll say it. Um, so these are new listeners that we picked up uh, within uh, the last episode. So just kind of saying, I don't know your names or your, your home locations or anything like that. Um, but I do know what country you're listening from. Or, the alternate title to this, where is your VPN now set to? <laughs> Could be either one. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I, I looked at some of them where we have, like, one, yeah. and it's in, like... Uh, like, it's like Kazakhstan? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, and I'm like, I feel like that's probably not true. But maybe but Maybe. Maybe it is. We still have the two in Saudi Arabia, so I feel like that might actually be two people uh, still waiting on those those cars or jets or whatever they want to send us. Or just money. You send us money, that's fine. Oil, just send gold us barrels bu- of oil. Gold bullion! <laughs> yeah, whatever you've got, send it to us. Um, so, we have three new listeners in Iceland. Woo! Which, as we know, is not actually made of ice. It's yeah, true. Yeah, yeah, we caught on finally to that, yeah. Uh, we have five new listeners in New Zealand. Wow! Which is great, because honestly, we don't want any from Old Zealand. It's not, not a place we care about. Joke is terrible. It really is, yeah. Well, then guess what? We have 19 new listeners in Australia. Or as I wrote it down, Mustralia. <laughs> I'm going to show Josh that I actually, I actually did do that Why for some reason. Did you write in Australia? I don't know. What? I don't know what, what came over me. And You're I just... tried to turn it into an A, and now it does not look right. But, uh... <laughs> But there's, there's no M in that at all. No, there's like no no part of it in anywhere. It's not even in the Australian language. No. They don't even have the letter M. <laughs> no M's at all. Yeah, it's good eye, right? I think. Oh, we just lost him with that. Uh, yeah, yeah, they're all so they're all gone now. I can only assume that you are all uh, that either AOS coach mentioned us again on something, <laughs> some, <laughs> or some you're all just. Like, yeah, I'll check these. I'll check these idiots yeah, out. Yeah, why not? Let's check these dummies out. Uh, which is really funny. So if we ever do a, a world tour, we basically based on our countries of listening, we, we have, have to, to go, go to Australia, New Zealand, and Iceland. Well, yeah. Well, we only out of the three New Zealand uh, Icelands, there's only like ten total. So <laughs> I think that's enough for me to go to Iceland. I would like to go to Iceland. Yeah, sounds nice. There. I've heard it's uh, not ice. Well, yeah, see previous bit. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So like, thanks for the explosion of Australian listeners, and uh, we, we enjoy your winter, you bastards, because it's really hot and n- nasty here. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, so I I don't know why that is, but it's really awesome. Uh, so thank you to all that. And those are our that's our new listener segment. That's new our new se- listener segment. New segment announcement. Dun, 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 dun. I don't I dun. don't know when to jump in. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do musical chairs with a song with pauses in it. <laughs> it throws all the kids off. They kick you out. The, the 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 brilliant part about this is because we've both worked in radio. You know exactly the bit that I'm doing of the of like the stinger that just never finishes stinging. It continues <laughs> to sting. Yeah, and, and you're like, I'm just like, where? Okay, where do I and come the wet. Ba- 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so I'm gonna put the note card away because the last part is for the last part of the show on the note Ooh. card. Ooh. Um, who are our sponsors? We're, sponsors. Uh, let's get them out of the way fast. Yeah. Let's get them just the well, hell out of the way. I mean, I like me a good Gigabytes Cafe who has resurrected from the dead. Yes. Yes. Uh, come back to life, zombified everywhere. Uh, now living all on your digital computers and yeah. devices because you can go to Gigabytes online and order all your wonderful Warhammer stuff, among many other excellent items that maybe you would like to put on your shelves that they have on their shelves and you guys just you trade shelves <laughs> you, trade fact, shelves. you can have the bring you, them a shelf yeah you can give get their shelves and you give them i don't know some sort of currency 
Um, Some sort of promissory of, note, perhaps? Yeah, indeed. Oh, yes. They uh, will also take gold bullions if you have those. <laughs> if you have those. Yes. So, if you head to Gigabytes online, buy all your stuff there. They ship lots of places. Yeah. I don't actually remember where all they ship to. but Pretty it's much of... everywhere, because if they don't, we do. So, so we can go. ship anywhere, basically, that we can legally Neat. ship to the, wherever you Zach are. Zach knows where we it goes. We can ship to these three places. I'm sorry, Australia, it's going to cost. It's going to have, try, Australia, so try not to buy. And New Zealand as well. Uh, try not to buy from Gigabytes. <laughs> try to buy from anywhere else. I, we've, we've done some fulfillment for some Kickstarter projects where we had backers in Australia, and it's like, oh, they paid $200 for the game and $250 oh. shipping. And VAT fees and like all that. Well, not VAT, but like tariffs and all that yeah, kind of stuff. And it's like and tariffs and VAT. Oh, yeah. God, VAT taxes. Ugh. Why can't they just be like Americans and have a totally logical tax system that doesn't change state by state and isn't hard to file yearly or quarterly? And the fact that we have to file. That we have to do. And if you do it wrong, they put you they in put prison. They put you in jail. Did they teach you that? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> and all of our Australian listeners going, that sounds archaic and yeah. stupid. And, you're like, and we're like, yeah. Yeah. I know. <laughs> it's true. I don't know why they do that. Um, so yeah, oh boy, I'm already schwitzing it up in here. We're gonna, it's gonna be a sweaty yeah, show be a in this place. Sweaty show. I'm also pounding like an entire purple monster energy drink, which I got because, uh, A, it's the only one they had, and B, the purple sun is what we're gonna be talking about a little bit Ooh. today. But before that, you know what's not purple? It's Blueberry Podcasting. And they host this podcast, and you can hear them. That was a great segue, thank you. And they, you can hear them, and uh, we, you can go host your own podcast. You can use our link in the thing, go to our website, and you can click on it. ATL War. Yeah, yeah, use the code ATL War, and I think, I yeah, like a month of premium stuff and like a free month hosting. And, uh, it seems like it changes every couple of months, and I never know what to say. They just, they just keep updating stuff. Look, yeah. you, you, use AT, you use code ATL War. You pop on the Blueberry Podcasting. Somebody's used it once before. Dude, we, we still, we still, still no don't know who that person no is. Yeah. is. But thank you for using it. Um, uh, and you get to, you know, freaking throw your podcast and stuff up there. They'll give you some free stuff. They'll let you podcast about anything because fucking knows that they keep letting us podcast. So and, there you go. And I have to say, from having, we're launching a whole bunch of media stuff uh, in the coming couple of months for my company. Um, that I work for, and we're doing a lot of content creation, so I'm setting up new podcasts. And I, I, I Blueberry, turn turn away for a second. I, I had to price compare a little Ooh. bit. I had to. It's a corporate Ooh. thing. I have to. I have to be gotta, able to look. You get, get quotes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had to look up, but not at like the level that you might have to do quotes where like somebody has to approve them. I just had to make sure I wasn't doing something <laughs> stupid. Um, and honestly, not only is Blueberry like the cheapest, the way that they roll out to multiple channels and the way that we're getting all these international listeners is stupid easy. Like, I don't have to, I set it up once, and we're going on, we're in the India's number one podcast network. Uh, we're, we're the on number there. one podcast in India, that's what we're I heard. <laughs> we absolutely are. We're in, like, the top 20 of the very, what did I say last time? It's like hobby, it's like arts and culture, hobby, like, wargaming. It's a very niche way they categorize it, but we're in, like, the top 20 there, which is weird, because this podcast is not in a language that, if you don't speak English, and we barely speak English, uh, we don't provide translations, and uh, I wonder if maybe there's, like, automated ways to get that. And if so, I cannot whew. wait to see what an automated translation of my nonsense words are. I love watching YouTube because we also are on YouTube and watching the subtitles try to figure <laughs> just, out just not only desperately our, struggling, I like our inability to speak human, but also the names we say. Yeah, Nothing it, is real. It's, just, it's stupid. It's all just nonsense. In but here, it's all maybe. close enough it's a, to stuff. It's a facsimile. Stormcast is always stormiest. It's a dictionary it's, word for you. Yeah. The yeah. source and a facsimile. So, um, yeah, so we, uh, Blueberry Podcasting. What's our last host? Who's, who's, I smell something juicy in here. Mmm, Llama Juice Painting. It is. And he painted all your models for you. Including all these Skaven that we've been talking about. Including all the Stormcasts that, that are on the other half of that box yeah. that we haven't been talking about at all. Um, Some point. And maybe, just maybe, if you happen to get your hands on a little Forbidden Power, maybe it would be way back uh -huh. when you haven't painted it yet. Yeah. Uh, like a certain someone that we know. That's me. I, oh, I'm, so the, I'm, the, I'm, the, I'm that certain someone. I have a, for, a box of Forbidden Power, and I haven't painted it yet. Mm. You know, maybe you go on over to Lemon Juice Painting. Boy, I can't wait for the subtitles to try to figure out what the <laughs> hell that was. I did it on purpose. That was one. Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, but Lemon Juice Painting will paint all your stuff for you real good, or at least okay enough. Yeah, it's okay <laughs> enough. You know, it's good enough. Yeah. And that's what you came and for. And we love Justin. Justin's yeah. been on the show. He's a friend of the show. He's a... Yeah. He's a friend of the show. We gotta get him back on at some point. Just you gotta come back, back on the show. Might come tell us about man. what the fuck Slanesh is doing. Because I looked at it and I've looked at all the armies and there's some of them with the faction packs that I looked at and I went, I don't play this and I can't fill my brain up with it because I have to learn all the other stuff over again. I don't have. I don't. I'm have just gonna time or patience. Shove or it to the side. Yeah. The mental fortitude to deal with that many half naked lady thingies. Lady antelope monsters. Yeah. Yeah, I've got my own half-naked lady antelope monsters to deal with. I can't deal yeah, with the I fantasy ones. Yeah, I can't deal with the ones. fantasy yeah. ones. Yeah, my own Ridiculous. cryptids wandering around. Ugh. 
So those are our sponsors. Yeah. Uh, that's who makes this show possible, but also the listeners and uh, viewers like you who, who donate to someone <laughs> somewhere. And not us, though, because we don't have a thing. Uh, now that Patreon is like fighting Apple, we're probably not going to do a Patreon, yeah, maybe. Not. I don't know. I don't know what we're going to do. We might, I, I Who cares? A, I, no, like, okay. At this point, we don't produce content regularly enough to like justify no. any of that we're stuff. We're not going to charge you so for this We're not going to charge you for any nonsense. We're just going to put this out. When you guys listen, we're totally happy. We're just, we, we're we don't care. Please, this we're, punch. Just, we're doing this because... Well, really, we don't have anything better to do. No, this is this is kind of my career is, a little is, bit, and this, I just drag just, you in with tendrils every this time. Is a, this is a hobby that yeah. has turned into a podcast, which is what all good hobbies happen to white men in their 40s. Yes, yeah. Well, and like <laughs> a couple of white guys uh, in their late 30s, late 30s, late okay, 30s fair enough. Uh, we decided that the best thing to do was to launch a podcast. Right. And, and, and as two white men talking on the internet, we're basically empty. And it's an uncompeted <sighs> space. You yeah. Know? There's no, no one else out nobody here. Nobody else is out here. No one Not, is doing this. I mean, this. you weren't going to smoke meat. No. And I wasn't going to keep bees. No, no. Then what else were we going to do? Yeah. So yeah. podcasting was really all that was available we to us. We were going to buy a really fast sports car. Because we don't got that kind of money. Never mind. Wait, you did. <laughs> Damn it. I've already had my midlife crisis, <laughs> but I did it at 34, which is either good or bad. I don't know. I might be done by 68. Who knows? When's your mid what's your midlife crisis going to be? I don't know, man. You got to get to it at some point. <sighs> yeah, well, yeah, but if I, don't boat? Hit, if I don't hit my midlife crisis until like 50, does that mean I live to 100? I think so. Or what if you die at 49 and you never got to buy a boat for no reason? That's a good point. Yeah. But then I have to have boat money. Well, let's get what well, I didn't say it was a big boat. Oh, pontoon? Just get a pontoon. We'll do a show on a pontoon. We'll, oh, yeah, too bad we already did the Eidneth show. Because <laughs> that would have been great. <laughs> No, we can do it for Carriage and Overlords. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll be on a boat. It's we'll do that. Oh, okay, we'll do that from a helicopter. <laughs> what a great show. <laughs> <laughs> Screaming over a helicopter sound. Uh, and then we can... Then a fortunate song starts playing, and then we immediately get sued. Yeah, yeah. And, and honestly, I would say that the most unfortunate sound is probably the purple one in this episode. Yeah. So um, I actually had that joke preloaded. I was going to make it... Inf- I have to fucking cross it out of my sheet now. Because I had a bit about Unfortunate Son when you play that son. Uh, uh, I've ruined bits and you didn't even know it. That's uh, good. It's good stuff. So, what are we doing today, Zach? We're talking something. Manifestations. Which they were like, endless spells are now called manifestations. And we said, no, they're yeah, not. Everyone <laughs> went, no. And they kind of have soft rolled that back. And now they're just endless spells again. Which, they are manifestation lores, but they are called endless spells. So Because we bullied Games Workshop. <laughs> Look, it was too many things to change. I yeah. still say wounds. I, we were playing Spearhead the other day, and we I said were. wound like ten times by accident. Look, it, it's just this is it's baked into our brains at this point. Yeah. We have to be deprogrammed. By the way, Spearhead's fun. It we is. Sh- we've, we've, really, we've, really good time. We've, I've played. Very excited about Spearhead. I played tournament. two and a half games. I uh, played one game in which yeah. I was murdered ruthlessly. So thanks for that. There time. was a. There- <laughs> There were some rolls in there. It was the point where I said, oh, just don't Josh this roll, and you rolled six out of seven ones. And I was like, okay, yeah, that was kind of the Josh roll there, yeah. And then there was the one where I cranked like three sixes for saves. It was like, all right, well, that never happens any other time. Yeah, it was really rude. Yeah, I appreciate sorry that. about that. Sorry yeah, about that. Well, you know, I kept swapping dice out because they were rolling too good. I felt bad. Uh, but yeah, Spearhead's fun. If you haven't had a chance to play it, play go it. play it. We're going to do more on Enjoy that later. It. You'll see a um, whole thing pop up on the, so- on the socials and on yeah. the internet at some point where we're doing the best Spearhead army which one is the best and it's not at all subjective because it's multiple people playing different armies and also there's random events that happen in the game so. i don't know like dice rolling yeah. yeah and also the fact that i scored max points in that first turn because two of my battle tactics were hold objectives i was already standing on it's got some good randomness and i appreciate that yeah so it was like well this is all right i'm just gonna Done. just gonna do this not Thumbs do anything up. yeah congratulations uh you know it's not in spearhead though uh endless spells yeah they don't you don't get to what fucking it? do that yeah they're you, like no, no. They're like, take Don't those toys, that. throw them away, yeah. burn them, <laughs> but then save that. them later. Yeah. So, so, so manifestations have changed in the way that uh, if you're used to the old ways where you're like, well, Josh, let me just ask you, like, I, I have, I have uh, points and no manifestations. Why? Wh- what can I do? I have, I need to spend points to buy manifestations, right? <laughs> Not anymore. To put in my army. But, but I have three points and no manifestations. Can't I have three manifestations and no money? Yes, you can. Sure. Because you don't have to... That was a, a weird <laughs> Simpsons joke. You don't have to pay for them anymore. So what you do when you build your list is you pick a lore. And in that lore is anywhere from one to four spells. And you get to I cast those spells. Type. Yeah. And, and those any wizard in your army can attempt to cast those spells. They are all summon tagged. <clears throat> um, and they are all... They're not the one where you can just multiple times cast it. So you try and you fail. You don't get to do it again. Um, but they are... And they're all kind of varying casting values in a PDF slash... So I have the PDF. And Josh has the General's Handbook, and both are laid out in a really bizarre way. Yes. So this is going to be a weird show because they tell you how to cast them and the details of the distance and the casting. And then, then you, you have to go to a separate page. All the way down to find out what it does. Yeah. 
And I feel like they could have put that on the same War Scroll. Probably, Because yeah. I'm looking at your page, and there's a lot of design space there. I don't necessarily need to see uh, that much of the picture of the model. I can take a little picture and figure it out. Maybe put the casting cost somewhere on the like, spell. I can understand to a certain degree, like, why they did this. Because it's like, oh, hey, this is, like, the spells that you get for the manifestation lore that you have picked when you're building your army construction, right? You say, yeah. oh, yeah, I get access to these. And then I can go over here and do the things. But, like, there's some very, in, like, you could just carry some information over. Very simple stuff. Yeah. Like, you can still have this page. This page is great. Just carry this information with, like, the casting value onto the actual War Scroll card in the page yeah. in there. So we can see, I don't know, what it costs to cast. And, like, I like that it has the lore on there, but maybe we don't need that in the rule part. Maybe. Because maybe you just put on... Maybe this will be in the new the gamer edition of the book. Did you see how they're doing the, the new battle tomes now when they did the Skaven release? They're going to release the full battle tome with all the lore and pictures and stuff, and then a gamer edition that's cheaper that's just the rules. Huh. Which is... I don't know if that's good or bad. I Like, for me, that has owned three... No. Five Stormcast battle tomes. Yeah, I guess you don't need, like, I don't really the need the lore. Like, you don't care. My God, point. do I know it. It's the, you yeah. know... Because unless they're changing something, which they very rarely ever change anything in the co like the core books for it's the armies, it's usually just an update, and then yeah. we know that because of the uh, the book series that come out with like the lore updates and stuff. So like it is kind of like cool, I guess this. But if you're a new player and you want to get the whole battle tome, or if it's an army you've never collected before, right? You know, you can go. Yeah, I want the entire. Ooh, I want that. Book. I want to learn all about that army. Yeah, it's a it's a neat thing. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm down for it, especially I'm, if it's cheaper. Yeah, significantly cheaper. I want to say it was not I like the, not like price. this twenty percent off crap. No, no, no. I, I think, think I think like it was like half about off. half the cost yeah. of the actual book. Half yeah. the cost. Half the page is half the cost. That's how this should work. Yeah. yeah. With Games Workshop, that's only going to be a hundred dollars. That's not going to be true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, so you get to pick the lore and you put the spell down and all the spells are, for the most part. A lot of the endless spells are very similar to what they did. Obviously, they now have a, a weirdness where they have hit points. Yes, so you can you hit can, them. You can just punch them. The, 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 the Van Dins, I, I've been shooting manifestations <laughs> off the table for years. Now everybody gets to. Yeah, everybody gets to shoot a manifestation. Yeah, which is also cool because some of them, as we're going to learn by this first one, actually are good against other manifestations. Um, so it's an it's a interesting way that they've kind of changed the game. Right now, they're very hot. Uh, they're so hot. Everybody has manifestations. Every game I've seen played, it's like, free. yeah, it's like three <laughs> spells on either side that people are throwing out and doing stuff with. So like, just, just I imagine there's going to be a little rollback or something at some point, some meteoration on this. I don't know. Um, but maybe like you can only get one a turn kind of thing. Yeah, so it'll, like, get, it'll get mediated after we, they sell all the boxes. Yeah. Which they don't <laughs> have. <laughs> Yeah, least, after the reprint. Yeah, I was like, because then, then I was at Gen Con and they, they had, I want to say, two. Damn. Uh, on the shelf, and uh, they were both in the black boxes, which is the white sticker. So you had to pick it up and look at it to figure out what it was. That's the box um, that I have. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> and so I was kind of yeah, and you didn't get the cool book with it. No, I there just, was a whole cool book that had full page art of every spell and lore about it and little stories and like they didn't ever reprint that. And I don't think you can find it digitally, and that makes me sad because like not a lot of work went into that. And you see those spell artwork in the background of this stuff a lot. But like, I almost guarantee you they lost that source file. They, <laughs> they, they lost that. that source file. They deleted I, that IDD file. Yeah, as a marketing guy. As a marketing guy. Yeah, you know, yeah. if you've never re-released it, you've lost the original file. <laughs> or, or one of the artists or something was like, you can't use my word. If something happened, yeah, we something were like, happened. Eh, okay. yeah. Yeah. So we're just going to go through a couple of manifestation lore things. We're going to talk about them. We're going to hit a break, come back and talk about the rest. It'll be a real short episode. Yeah. Um, a little, little. Once we, once we, can stop once we our, get out of the fluff. Yeah, if we can stop fluffing each other a little bit here. Mm, no, um, I can never stop fluffing. Is I that... can. I'm just, <laughs> we're a fluffy bunch of guys. Uh, so the first one that we're going to talk about is the Kron Spine Incarnate. The big bad boogeyman of the last edition. If you played against him, you hated him. If you played with him, you had to reference him 15 times to figure out the rules. I had one, and I ended up selling it to McKenzie so he could kit bash some stuff on it. Because I don't know if he ever did or not, but, like, I didn't want to play it. <laughs> because <laughs> it was so... It had this weird thing where it leveled up and leveled down. And if you, you ride, it was a nonsense war scroll. Yeah, it was a little sub-game you had to play. And I, some people really liked that. But for me, I was like, I don't want to have another extra thing to do. Especially, like, old Nurgle in the last edition had, like, ten things to keep track of. And Dude, I would always forget one of them. It was I didn't always one of those things where, that. like, because it was a spell... Like, it, it already requires you to play a part of the game where, like, I don't know, uh, for some of us, we just choose not to do magic anyway. Yeah. Uh, and then to have, like, a, a whole up and down, like, side to side war scroll that on top of the magic casting that you already had to do, eh, too much, it's too, it's too much, too much to think about. It's too, like, too complex. Now it's a lot more simple. Yes. So I'm going to, so what we're going to do is we're not going to read everything on this because guess what? They're all, if there's not a friendly blank, roll 2d6. Correct. That is every single one, unless I'm wrong. But I will tell you if I'm wrong, because I'm pretty sure it's all of them. So, 
This is a casting value of eight. A little chunky. A little chunky. Might need a plus on that. Uh, he's set up within 12 of the caster, visible to them. I think that's pretty standard for most of them. Mm -hmm. um, and with nine from enemy units. That is not standard. Some of them you can just set up on top of people. Yeah. Uh, or not on top of you. And then we get to, what does, what does a Kronspine do? What is, he's, got a, he's got a stat block now. He does. So he's got a 10-inch move, 12 health, 4-up save, and an 8-plus banishment. That is, if you are an opposing wizard, you can try to banish, banish him. Banish instead of killing him with, like, punches. Yeah, yeah, if you just want to eat him. Um, he has the Amberbone Claws and Fangs, 6 attacks, 4s and 2s, Rin 2, damage 3. Anti-manifestation, uh, plus 1 Rin, so that's Rin 3, damage 3 if he's eating a spell. He's going to eat whatever spell it is right off the table on the first turn. There's Everything in here cannot take that volume of attack. Yeah. Because most of the spells are, I think they're all like four uh, or usually five four or six. So it's, like an yeah. auto, it's like an auto kill. Yeah. As so, long as you're hitting and wounding. So instead of being a confusing mess of a thing that keeps a hero alive and makes people frustrated, now it just hunts and kills spells. That's kind of neat. Neat. Uh, every time it is targeted by the banif banished manifestation ability, someone tries to, you know, pray it away. Um, if it would be banished, it is not banished. Wouldn't be funny if the roll just ended right there. <laughs> it's like, nah. Um, instead, it takes six points of damage to it, which, okay, cool. Oh, I forgot that has a ward six up. Yes, as well. I, I think most of the manifestations do. It's kind of weird because you have to remember to look at the very bottom, yes. and we're not quite trained to do that. Um, and it's got a passive that, that you can add one to the number of dice rolled when you make charge rolls for it to a maximum of three, so 3d6 charge, if it's within 18 of any enemy manifestations, but it has to end close to an enemy manifestation. That doesn't mean it has to end close to the one that's closest to it, just it has to end close to one. Right. So this thing just wants to eat spells. But also, if I come at your ironclad and I hit you with six attacks, fours and twos, rend two, damage three. That's pretty spicy. It doesn't matter that you're not a spell. He's still going to rip a chunk out of you. Yeah. So, like, I see this thing being pretty cool. Uh, and it, it seems like a really neat summon now. And I like this much better than the other one where you bind it to a guy and mm -hmm. then if it breaks, it goes wild. Because this feels like a Final Fantasy summon. Like, look, I got one spell. I don't get, you get nothing else in this lore but this one guy. But if you cast him, he's a big old guy, and he can go and just wreck some house. And there is there's some really fun stuff, especially with like a, as we've seen a lot of endless spells kind of on the table right now. If people are, I don't know, maybe a little bit too close to their own endless spells, and this thing all of a sudden has a three d six charge coming right at your manifestation, you're like, oh, he's gonna eat my manifestation. No, 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 he's gonna eat the thing that's standing next to the manifestation yeah. because he only has to end within a half inch of the manifestation. He doesn't have to attack it. It's on a big base too. So he's, you, a, he's a big chunky boy. It's, it's a big base. Yeah, it's a little bigger than you think it is. I think it's like the Celestine Prime size base. So it's it's. And you know big. it does fly. Yeah. So you, so you can't stop it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think I think if you see this thing on the table and you don't have uh, if you don't have manifestations, your way to do it is to just try to shoot it. Shoot it away. Just, <clears throat> and I feel like a lot of these um, you can charge and fight, and if you fight first before they pick it to activate, you're probably going to be okay killing it. But like this one, maybe don't risk that chance because you don't want to strike last from something else and then this thing just eats your elite unit and you're like well yeah it is a, it is a spicy punchy boy yeah that's a lot of damage even stormcast are like that's too much damage mm -hmm. calm down mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so what's the next manifestation lore we have well then we move into forbidden power Ooh. yeah so there's yeah. four spells in the forbidden power manifestation lore quite a difference from the one you get for the other one indeed so you can you could summon the shards of valgar uh-huh yes. you could summon the lachan the soul seeker you could summon the Horror Gas, or you could summon the Soul Scream Bridge. Yeah. We'll start with uh, the Shards of Valgar first. It is a six cast. Mm -hmm. uh, you set up the Shards of Valgar and the spell wholly within eight pieces of the caster, invisible to them. And a Shards... Uh, and has two parts that must be set up within nine inches of each other. Yeah. These used to be one of my favorite ones to use because if you use them correctly, you could just lock down a lot of stuff at once. And when endless spells were doing Nurgle disease points, you'd just be like, cool, a bunch of people are going to get diseased because they're two big, chunky bases. Yeah. And this is one of those that it doesn't move, right? So you set the sucker up. It, it is where it is. Uh, it's got an eight health, a four up save, seven banishment. Um, it's passive. Um, when a number of uh, damage points equal to this manifestation's health character are allocated to it, oh, it's uh, just destroyed. Never mind. Yeah, so that's, just yeah that's basically more. they all just, when yeah, they, they die, they all die. Just have that. Um, it uh, does move a little. Oh, it does. Yeah. Yeah, what you, yeah, you do is... Yeah, you pick up a part of this manifestation, you remove it from the battlefield, and set it up again on the battlefield, holding within nine inches of the other part. So it can kind of do like a little it, steppy step. Yeah, it walks around, basically. Yeah. Um, and, but what does it do if I'm in the way? Well, each time an enemy unit uses a move ability, while it is within six inches of any parts of this manifestation, the effects of the fly ability do not apply to that unit. Enemy units cannot be set up within six inches of either part of this manifestation. See, that's the part that I actually think is pretty valuable, because this is a big base. The no-fly is like, well, that's going to be good sometimes and not good sometimes. But at the setup... The setup part, that can be pretty good, because you can block out a chunk of this, and if you know you have an opponent like Dark Oath, where they summon in things from the side of the table, you can block off a lot of the side of the table and just be like, look, you can't set up 
any of this stuff. Stormcast, the, the set up terminology is used universally now. Mm -hmm. So like block out a bunch of Stormcast by throwing this out where you on an objective and then walk your way up. Oh, I don't fly. I don't care if I get hmm. hit by it anyway. Maybe maybe if you don't want to get back capped. Yeah. Like if you don't want anything to like, you know, you want to kind of move up the board a little bit, kind of maintain center position. And then you're like, ooh, let me throw this behind me so then nothing can be set up on the backside of me. Yeah. Guard and, your butt. Yeah, guard your butt. Guard your butt with the shards of a galar. And they're pretty good at doing it. Yeah. They're also a cool model. I always yeah, like the little weird pyramid things floating around. What about the next one, Zach? What about the, uh, the... You want to do... I was like, which one's the next one for you? The horror gas is the next one for me. Oh, yeah. Okay, so the horror gas. I've always liked this one. It's a little head of Nagash, and it's funny when you summon Nagash, and it's like, go, little me! <laughs> it's go, my um, head! Yeah, so if there's not a friendly, blah, blah, blah. Uh, six on the save. You set it up wholly within 12, nine from enemy units. Okay, that's kind of uh, what most of them are. What the horror gas does, though, as soon as my PDF loads... Uh, is it is an eight inch move, six health, six up save, seven plus banishment. So it's pretty fragile, mm -hmm. but it has a shooting attack, which is a little cool. So it's a scream of terror, ten inch range, six attacks, twos and threes, rend two, damage one. Can shoot in combat. You can't stop screaming. Uh, and anti infantry plus one rend. So rend three against infantry. That's disgusting. And an interesting way to apply its lore of where it scares off people who are not you know, like steel heroes. Well, mm -hmm. if you've got a pack of little guys, they're less steely and it's spooky. Um, also a two a two to hit, yeah, yeah, it's going to hit. Yeah, that's that's you, gross. And if you think about it, you set it up outside of nine, but it has a ten inch range, so you can set it up and shoot whatever you want to shoot. Yeah, you know, um, the and it has a melee weapon, deathly touch, fours and fours, no rend, one damage. Yeah, well, okay. yeah, well, you probably don't want to touch it. No, but well, also actually, it's, rather you do want to touch it. You want to get it off. You, you want, want to try to fight. You want, it you as want fast to fight. You want to fight yeah. this thing and get it off the table as fast as possible. But also, I'm personally not going to ever let you do that because I'm going to have it inside of a unit or something else. And it has any shooting phage, the Harbinger of Horror. You pick an enemy unit that's targeted by the shooting attacks. If the roll is less than the number of models in the target that were slain this phase, the target cannot use commands for the rest of the turn. That's really good. Oof. That's really pretty good. Because that'll shut down people who, like, um, are really depending on getting that all-out defense on that unit to hold the line or uh, rallying or something. Like, like it's going to... It's really cool to cut, turn off commands in this uh, edition. And also just, like... Even if you don't do that, who cares? You got six attacks at a Rin 3 against infantry. You pick off all those cities of Sigmar guys. They're going to run away pooping just, themselves. Just, just pluck it away, man. They do not. They don't want to be anywhere near that. But what, what else can I do? What, I've, I've picked this conjuration. There's got to be at least two more in here, right? <laughs> Indeed there are. Uh, the next one for me is going to be the Summon the Soul Scream Bridge. Uh, it is a six to cast. Um, and you set the Soul Scream Bridge holding within eight inches of the caster, invisible to them. And a Soul Scream Bridge has two parts that must be set up within nine inches of each other. Yeah. So what does it do? Well, first off, it has 12 health. It's beefy. Yes. Uh, it's got a 4-up save, and it's got a 7-plus banishment. Um, and it's in your movement phase, it's a deathly passage. You pick a friendly unit wholly within 6 inches of one part of this manifestation to be the target, and you remove the target from the battlefield and set it up again on the battlefield wholly within 6 inches of the other part of this manifestation and more than 9 inches from all enemy units. Yeah. So a little pick up and shift over to some other part on it's, the board. It's a way not only, and I have seen this used artfully, um, it's a way to not only get a bunch of guys across the table, uh, it's also a way to you put down two big bases that will block out people from running up to those people you got out, because you put them on the other side of it, so they have to get around the spell. Uh, and it doesn't do, like, damage or anything anymore, so you just kind of like a free free boat. Well, not a free boat ride, that's the other guy. But it's a, it's a free bridge. Um, also, like, you notice that it didn't have a, a limit on the setup, like mm -hmm. all the other ones do, so you can get it pretty close to people. And uh, you can fit a lot of units, you can fit a lot of stuff wholly within six of these guys. Because that means you could wrap a unit around it and teleport, I don't know, 10 Vigilors or something. Well, not Vigilors, but like 10, 10 beefy Liberators onto an objective and like, boom. All right, charge us. Just shifting them across the battlefield. Yeah. Make it, repositioning them. Making slow models fast again. This is something, yeah, like the Nurgle guys, this is a good way to get that horde of Plague Bearers, of 20 Plague Bearers onto an objective. If you're not sure you want to you spend the run roll on them or something like that, do this and just drop them on there. It's a really cool model, too. Uh, I think that I like I like a lot of these, but that is one where I was like, that's actually pretty cool when I saw it in person. It looks goofy in pictures, and in person, if you don't paint it quite the way they did and you do a more realistic paint on it, it looks pretty neat. Um, but there's one more, I thought, right? There is indeed. Right? My PDF is so slow. It's Lachan, the Soul Seeker. Lach, 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 it's the Boat Boy. Lachan? 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 Yeah. Casting value is seven. Uh, you set him up wholly within 12, visible to them, and more than nine from enemy units. This is the little guy on the boat. 
uh, with all the thousands of little skulls that he has on the boat. Um, and he used to also, you would use him to transport people, but then he would just flat out kill one of them, which is pretty fun. 12-inch uh, move, 10 health, 4-up save, 7 banishment. So he's going to get across the table. He's got the scything ore. Or what, you he say? Can punch, he can punch things. He hits you with an ore. Uh, three attacks, fours and threes, Rin one, damage D3. Crit is two hits. Eh, it's all right. You know, you might get a, you might get a couple more hits out of that. Um, what he does, though, is you pick a friendly infantry wizard within three inches of this manifestation. In your movement phase, sorry. Um, this manifestation can move a distance up to its move, and then he drops the wizard off. Then the wizard takes one damage, because as he leaves, he just turns around and slaps him on the butt with the ore, and he's like, get out there, champ, but it's really hard. It hurts the guy's feelings, and that's where the one damage comes from. But, like, in Who knew? infantry wizard hero... Uh, it's a shame that most of the Stormcast wizards are going away. Because, boy, do they not care about taking a damage. Yeah. They're big old chunky punch wizards anyway. But, like, uh, the Blight Kings... Uh, not Blight Kings. The, uh, the Rotbringer Sorcerer can do this. Like, there's a lot of people that go, okay, I took a damage, but also I can heal. Um, the infantry thing is important. No, it cannot transport your great unclean one. No, it cannot pick up techless. But it doesn't say non-unique. So some of the ones who, like uh, Lumineth, I think, that have infantry wizard also unique can take a ride on this as well. It's kind of neat. I don't know if it's super duper useful. Uh, there's a Stormcast spell that's the Dias that lets your wizard fly and have 12 inch move and stuff like that. And that always kind of felt like, here's a good way for me to send my wizard off on an adventure he should not go on by himself. <laughs> and then just get murdered because he's way over here and he ran away from stuff. I don't know. I, I'm interested. Uh, shout out if you know good ways to do this. Like to, to use this model. Because it's really cool. I love my paint job that I did on one. Um, and I don't know. I've never used him because yeah, I never really saw a point of it. But let us know what you think. So that is the Forbidden Power Lore. And if you didn't know, that's the little extra box set that came out, like, a year later after uh, Malign Portance did, I think, is when they put that book that book and box set out. That sounds uh, It's not in the right. Malign Portance main set of spells. Right. It was the add-on one that came out yeah. after that. It was a bonus box. So I also think a lot of people just might not have access to that. Probably. I don't think I've seen many of them in the wild since then. It tended to just be bought up. And, Most if, you, people, and if you had one, you probably bought, like, the, the bridge... Yeah. I remember pe a certain people having, like, the bridge, and that was, like, a, a run that you could use. I think it was even with... Might have been with Carriage and Overlords, actually. I think the bridge and the uh, the horror ghast were what people got, because the horror ghast, at least for a while in the last edition, comboed up and was like, hey, have a neg... It was like, have a neg two bravery with something else, and also you can't uh, you can't do anything you, you, inspiring presence. Yeah, no command So it was just basically like, you're going to run away if yeah. you hit a unit with this thing. Just kill one thing. Yeah, just kill one thing. Well, that, luckily... That's, that's, just, that's not a thing anymore. No, no. Now everybody stays around. No matter yeah. how much they're pooping themselves, they stay to fight. Um, but man, I'm glad that that's like the, the most spooky spells, and we're not going to turn the page. And, oh, oh, God! So much more spooky spells! This is the Morbid Conjuration. Or as I like to call it, the Realm of Shish, because it's just the Shish spells. Kind of weird that... I guess they couldn't make that make sense for all of them, because some of them were not from Shish originally. This is, this is me just faffing about, about lore reasons for these spells to be put together. So, what are the four that are in this one, Zach? You got the Purple Sun... Of Shaish, which does tie in. The Suffocating Gravetide. The Malevolent Maelstrom. That's the one that's a little weird, but also very cool. And the Soul Snare Shackles. Snackles. Or, which we'll, I was like, the Snackles, because we're going to just... Sorry. Soul Snare Shackles. If we shackles. weren't so drunk, we'd be able to Soul say that. Soul Snare better. Snackles. The Soul Snare Snackles. Uh, so you want to take the Purple Sun, or you want me to take? I will happily take the Purple okay, Sun. Okay, I'm going to drink sun. my Purple Monster while you talk about the Purple Sun. It's a casting value of eight. Um... And you set up wholly within 12 inches of the caster, invisible to them, and more than 9 inches from all enemy units. Yeah. So, what do you get on the purple sun? Uh, shish. Well, first off, it's an 8-inch move. It's a 10 health. It's a 5-up save. Yeah. 7-plus banishment. It has transmuting rays. It's a melee attack. It's 2d6 attacks. 3s and 3s, 1 rend, 1 damage. Crits are mortal wounds. Not bad. I mean, 2d6, I'm going to roll a 3 every time. Mm -hmm. But still. Mm -hmm. Um... In its movement phase, it has any uh, end given form, which the effect is this manifestation can move a distance up to its move characteristic, and it can pass through models during that move, then pick up to three enemy units that this manifestation passed across during that move to be the targets, and you roll a d3 for each target. On a two-up, inflict an, um, uh, an amount of mortal damage on the target equal to the roll. Hoof. It's a lot of stuff happening that is there. That's the Katamaria death rolling around yeah, in the army no there. Yeah, no fun skis. Um, it's, it gets even better, though. Yeah, it does. Uh, you have a passive as well, which is pull of the nadir. Effect is you subtract one from save rolls for enemy units while they are within three inches of this manifestation. Gross. And then finally, it has a wild form, which each time this manifestation is targeted by the banished manifestation ability. If it would be banished, it is not banished. Instead, allocate six damage points to it. World rules cannot be made for those damage points. So, so you, you, can't you can't get just rid get, of it that can't way. can't just get rid of it on a banishment. You gotta, like, 
You gotta either punch it or you're gonna banish it twice. You better not try to punch it most of the time. Unless you are a beef, beef stick and you're fine with taking a minus one to your save while you're fighting this thing and it's just blowing crit mortals all over just, you. Like, just trying to just, shoot it. Just trying just, to crit you. Yeah. Just trying to mortal you out. But also, like, imagine having to spend for like a frigate's worth of shooting just to get rid of this thing that I got for free. And that you may just bring back on the next turn. That I just had Nagash do it a plus four to cast, so I was cast on a four. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty gross. Yeah, it's pretty gross. I like it a lot. Uh, what's the next one we have? Well, because because our order this of these is, is all, completely oh, this different. This is all completely out of order. Yeah. Uh, so how about you give me something about the suffocating grave type? Yeah, I'll tell you about this. I stood by this spell, by the way. I'm gonna I'm gonna I was a proud grave tide supplier. I used it all the time because it was terrible. It didn't do much damage, but it was huge. And it was a weird shape. And you would summon it next to a wizard and just kind of move it like a quarter inch away from them and then just leave it there. And it's like your wizard had a whole flank covered. Um, you still can kind of do that, but now you might actually want to move it around a little bit. So casting value of seven. Uh, it is wholly within 12 outside of nine of enemy units. Blah, blah, blah. That's kind of like the standard thing. See, this is why I think they could have put that on the War Scrolls. They've keyworded stuff pretty well. They could have keyworded that somehow. Maybe we'll, in the next edition we'll see that. So here's what your suffocating succotash does. For a 12 inch move, 8 health, uh, 6 up save and 7 banishment. I guess 6 up save. It is dirt. It's pretty easy to hit dirt. Uh, but it's spooky dirt. It has the spectral riptide hang 10. You have 8 attacks, 2s and 3s, rend 1, damage 1, and if it charges, 1 damage. That's what I mean. Like You actually might want to try to like kick this thing into gear and run it into some people because I don't know, 8 attacks with rend 1, 2 damage is pretty solid. Um, pulled to the grave is its ability in your movement phase. This mo moves a distance equal to its move characteristic and pass through models, same as the purple sun. Pick an enemy unit that this manifestation passed through. Roll a dice for each model in that unit for a five up and do more mortal damage to the target. It's that spell we always talk about. That's like, I think it's like the Blades of Chaos or something originally, but it's the number of models, five up mortal wound spell. That's a good spell. Really handy for when you want to take out like a pack of 10 or a pack of 20 dudes. Yeah. And We're all sitting on like, one wound, just a bunch of just clear out the chafe. Bunch of clan rats, bunch of uh, Mortec guard, bunch of stuff that like if it doesn't have a ward, even better, you know. You yeah. Can just roll up and bunch just of bunch of thralls, nuke just them stuff. Yeah. Use a bunch of thralls. Freaking great. Yeah, and even if you are playing someone and they have like four gargants on them, okay, so it's probably not gonna matter so much the damage. Although you know, chip away at gargants, that's the only way to win against gargants. Turn this thing sideways. It will be most of the gargants' movement phase to get around it. So you've given yourself a cool way to block. It's bigger than the base of a uh, Man Crusher Gargan, the little guys. So, like, yeah, it has pretty good use. All right, there's two more, and thankfully for me, they put those on the same page for me. Oh, well, nice for you. So which one am I talking about? Let's let's hear about the, uh, I want to hear about them Schnackles. So the Summon Soul Snare Shackles, uh, it's a sixth cast. Uh, it, uh, you set it up wholly within 18 inches of the caster, invisible to them. A Soul Snare Schnackles. Endless spell has three parts and must be set up within three inches of at least one other part. But not outside of enemy units. You can put it right on. Them. You can put them right you can give up them in their business. Schnackies right in their business. So, it has no movement. It is a five up save, six health, seven banishment. It is in multiple parts. Uh, so when a number of damage points equal to this manifestation's health character are allocated to it, all of the parts are removed from play. Yeah. It's not like... It's not you have to six, kill each six, one six. individually. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so... What does it do? Well, in any hero phase, you are bound for the great oubliette. oubliette. Boy, am I not sure if that's how I'm supposed to say that. <laughs> uh, that. That's one of those words you read all the time, and then you go, am I saying is this? That is that right? the pronunciation? Oubliette. 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 Yes. Uh, you declare each, for each part of this manifestation, you can pick an enemy unit within three inches of that to be the targets. You cannot pick the same unit to be the target of this ability more than once per turn. In fact, you roll a d3 for each target on a two up. You inflict an amount of mortal damage on the target equal to the roll, and you subtract a number of inches equal to the roll from the target's move characteristic for the rest of the turn. That's that's, that's pretty, pretty good. Nice. Yeah. Damage Imagine, and move reduction. I'm looking at my four-inch move plague bears, and I'm like, I don't want you to cut my movement in half. The damage I don't care about, but that I well, care about. Truly, the best part about that is if you were to cut the if you cut the move, you also might not be able to escape get out these, of it. Yeah, yeah, get out of the soul snare shackles. You've basically hit gone. Okay, I have to just try to defeat this thing i just, just try to stab I, this you gotta punch this i just gotta punch these shackles because if you put it on an enemy obviously they're gonna be within combat range they can start attacking it if they want to uh but also just put it four inches away from an enemy so it's like well here's your choice do you want to try to make the movement go through it uh while you do that you know maybe it's like we've made it a lot harder for you or you're just not fast enough you have to reconsider this is a a lane blocker by threat mm. just block off a side of the table and you're like look if you don't have anything that's fast and flying it's gonna slow you down the damage is great but also, I don't think that's the point. The point is to just go, hey, 
Slow down there. <laughs> you're, Whoa, you're buddy. Clogging up a lane. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right. Finally. The Sorry. last one. The Malevolent Maelstrom. It's going to be great when I don't have to scroll all the way back and forth on this PDF so much because <laughs> we'll, the last couple will like, be beside each other. So the Maelstrom is cast on a 6, uh, wholly within 12, outside of 9. I don't know. I had to scroll up. All of mine are the same things. Uh, what does this do? By the way, this is the one that like last uh, year for a little while blew up. Uh, it does blow up, actually. But it, like, it blew up in popularity because it suddenly got really good. Um, let's see if it's still really good. 8-inch move, 6 health, 6 up save, 7 banishment. It has the Lashing Tendrils of Energy in melee. 2d6 attacks, 2s and 3s, no rend, 1 damage, crit, 2 hits. Okay, so a flurry of little hits. Dude, that's that's honestly the way that, like, you were in the Spearhead, you were killing my Stormcast. Just make me roll 10 saves. doesn't matter if I have a 3 up. I'm going to roll a couple of 1s and 2s. Um, it has the passive, the Necrotic Vortex. Uh, you give this manifestation 1 Maelstrom point when each time this manifestation is set up, so it shows up and it gets 1. Uh, each time a unit successfully casts a spell while it's within 12 of the manifestation, and each time a model is slain within 12 of the manifestation. So, hey, you got wizards, put it next to them. You got terrible chaff, put it in front of them. Your opponent also has a screen fighting your screen and everyone's dying? Stick this thing just right next to all of that. Um, it can only have a maximum of six points. But what can you do with those points, you say? He said that with his eyes, audience at home. Um, it, at the end of any turn, you do the morbid detonation. You uh, declare, if it has six Maelstrom points, you pick each unit, friendly and enemy, within nine of it to be the target. But, you know, you, you got chaff, who cares? Um, roll a dice for each target, and on two up, they take a mortal damage to the target equal to the roll. Then the manifestation is destroyed. Basically a bomb. I want you to notice one thing about that. It didn't say roll a D3. It says roll a two up. So roll a two up, inflict an amount of mortal damage equal to the roll. You could roll sixes on this and just have a bunch of stuff take six damage one turn. You roll it up with a unit of ten idiots. Ten... I don't know, Hobgrots or some screen you have that you're like, it's going to die. They die, you put six points on this thing, you blow it up, and that wizard sitting behind your opponent's line or their commander or whatever they've got there takes six damage. You just took out a Varengard with a bunch of Hobgrots and a silly Warlord with a face on it. That's pretty cool. And, uh, hey, it's really cheap, too, because it's free. free. <laughs> and you're taking it with two other really good spells and one that's kind of a little situational but also pretty good, too. I think this is probably my favorite lore, and it's Ooh. not just because I like spooky dooky stuff. Ooh. Um, it also just gives you four choices, which mm -hmm, it does mm -hmm, feel mm -hmm. a little funny that the other ones are all three. I know that's just how the math works out, but like four choices is, is pretty good. It's pretty good. I, I'm not going to go that far. You're not going to say it's your favorite? I'm not going to say it's my favorite. Uh, we'll wait till the end to see what your favorite is. Um, but I, I think also because it's fun to be in a gash and cast a little in the gash. And I, the gash is back, baby, because now if he borks his first spell, he doesn't fucking stand around the rest of the turn doing nothing. Uh, like, I like Nagash with a bunch of endless spells, and you're just like, Skeletons, throw out the Maelstrom. Oh, no, my Skeletons died. Boom! So, call an ambulance, <laughs> but not for me. And you just blow up your opponent with it. And the next turn, you're just like, here's another one. Kamehameha, bitch. Yeah. All right, so we're going to take a break, I think. Is Indeed we are. We decided. And then we're, we're going to come back and do the Aetherod Machineries. Let's break. Gigabytes Cafe in Marietta, Georgia is your one-stop shop for everything you need for your favorite hobby or fandom. Gigabytes carries a wide selection of miniature lines including Games Workshop, Reaper, and WizKids, not to mention all the terrain, paints, and hobby supplies you need to supplement your tabletop games. Not a wargamer? The cafe boasts an ever-growing selection of hundreds of board games, TCGs, CCGs, and other nerd-based acronyms eager to join your collections. So what are you waiting for? Go to gigabytesonline.com and start shopping now. Are you still bringing gray plastic to the table game after game? Do you have a big tournament coming up, but your army is barely glued together? Don't worry, Llama Juice Painting is here to help. Free your minis from their drag gray existence and let Justin bring them to life. Whether you're looking for a single centerpiece to bring your collection together or more battle line options, Llama Juice Painting is your best source for finely painted commission work. Check out some of Justin's work on facebook.com slash llama juice painting and get your quote today. The best part is Matt is somewhere in this building, and I know he could probably hear that. <laughs> he's, he's like, what in the absolute tits is going on in the studio right now? Uh, I, just, I just think the, the idea of like, 
<laughs> well, that was like the Mickey Mouse Ooh, version. That was, that yeah. was a Mickey, yeah. Mickey We're going to get sued by both people. <laughs> come after us. No, come after us, please. Don't come after us, bro. Oh, God. If we could somehow get Apple to sue us, that'd be like the worst. That'd, be the, that'd be the perfect triumvirate yeah. of like... What a what a the, hilarious... We would we would escape purely because the other lawyers would be like lawyering against each other. Yeah. Like against each other to try and like sue us the most. They would be trying to figure out how to pick the most out of our corpses. Yeah. And we would like... we would like we would, It'd be like one of those scenes where all the villains show up to beat up the the two joke heroes and then like we crawl out from under the tablecloth and we're like oh we made it out alive and they're all like punching each other we we started the fight and we're not even in it anymore. We're just like, whoo uh, yeah, dodge yeah. that one. Are we are we are we back in the show? I, I think like we're back. I, I could just roll into that bit. Well, yeah, whatever, so. whatever works. Hey, we're back in the show. Hey, hey, we got some more manifestations to talk that about. We and, do. Uh, we hopefully we don't get sued by any of the three biggest corporations in the world to sue people. Especially Disney right now. Especially Disney. Yeah. Well, I don't I don't know. It's like who who would you rather be sued by? Disney, Apple, or Nintendo? Would I <coughs> which of your, would I rather which be of your childhood by? things that you loved or appreciated that now have turned into horrible um, corporations? I would rather be sued by Nintendo. Really? Like, of, of all of them, yes. I believe Nintendo is the one that I would much... Like, that's the one that I would rather be sued by. Because I feel like I stand at least, like, a modicum of a chance against Nintendo. Yeah, I can see that. Like, like, they might just get to a point where they're like, man, I feel really bad about this. Which I do not believe is true for Disney or Apple. No, Apple, I don't think, would ever... The empathy is not no, part of the part, the not part of the thing. Yeah. Disney wouldn't sue you, but they also wouldn't let you sue them because you signed up for Disney Plus and you've opted out of being <laughs> able to sue them <laughs> even sue if them they kill any, you. Any reason. If they just kill apparently. you. Huh, it's wild out here in America, folks. <laughs> How's it going in Australia? You guys, uh... You guys cool? Can we come over? <laughs> we gotta get out of here, man. We, depending on the next couple of months, can we can we hang out for a little, <laughs> a little while just to see what's going on? Ooh. We'll bring our ether watt machineries. Yeah, we will. Uh, ether rot machineries. Oh, I'm a, a rot in, uh, yeah. in disgust of American politics. I am rot with anticipation. <laughs> uh, what? I don't know, man. <laughs> I'm just I'm just stumbling around here. Yeah, well, we're just we're just we're just making we're just making the best of it. We're doing the best we can yeah. with what we've got, and what we've got is three spells. And the ether rot machineries. So these are like your weird mechanical things. So like uh, these kind of look like KO spells, but you still don't have any way to do them. So I could. <laughs> How? Not. Yeah, I was like, you don't. Yeah, they I just don't. flat out do not want you to have a wizard anymore. Um, you could ally them. Oh wait. Uh, I guess. Hold on. I guess you could take a, renowned, a regiment of renown that has a spell cast during it, like a. Uh, uh, the Black Talons, because yeah. that does Lorelai or whatever, and she could do a. She could do a spell. You could do it, but you got to go well, really to do around the way. I'd have to, to do really. It. Like, configure the rules yeah. strangely in order to make probably this not work. Anyway, out. there are three either rot machineries that you can choose from. All right, you have the chronomatic cogs, the quicksilver swords, and the aether void pendulum. Hmm. Cogs, swords, and pendulums. That sounds like a porno. That <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say it sounds like you're cleaning out a box in your grandfather's closet. Oh, I went in a completely. Different but it direction. also might be full of pornos based on <laughs> cogs, swords, and pendulums. It's a it's a steampunk finance. <laughs> mm. Oh yeah. Okay. So, we'll start with the chronomatic cogs, The old classic. We? These things have been good, bad, in between, upside down. And I'm going to say they're good once again, because they are a six to All cast, right. right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you set these suckers up. You set, uh, holy within 12 inches of the caster, invisible to them. Uh -huh. Pretty simple. Uh, they do not move, but they are a six health, a four up save, and a seven banishment. Some durable cogs. Here is what they do. Uh, any t uh, the effect is any, uh, if any, blah, 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 once per turn, your hero phase. That's what happens. The effect is if there are any friendly wizards within three inches of this manifestation, you pick one of the following effects. You may increase the flow of time, which is until the start of your next turn, you can reroll charge rolls for friendly units while they are wholly within 12 inches of this manifestation. So if you want to be fast boy, charge up the table, you got a better chance of doing it. But what if I want to be share? Hmm. Could I turn back time? Well, then you can decrease the time oh. flow. And until the start of your next turn, you subtract one from a hit rolls for attacks that target friendly wizards while they are wholly within 12 inches of this manifestation. So you have the option of if you want to be smashy boy, you can have like your infantry up there getting wholly within the 12 inches of the cogs and do have a have a reroll in your charge. Yeah. Or you could sit the cogs behind you if you're the wizards and you can go, I am minus one to hit. Bring it, bro. Yeah. Hey, guess what? I'm Nagash, and now I'm minus one to hit Nagash. That's disgusting. That's not nice. Because <laughs> that's, you know, you want to hit that guy and cause him to stop being Nagash. And now you can't. Now well, you, you can't. could, but it's well, just harder. It's going to be harder, yeah, and you're going to you're going to have to get up next to him, and then he's going to do his finger touch of death, and you're going to die. Uh, yeah, it's it's in, you and always it's just, have to remember that wizards aren't necessarily the men wearing dresses, wearing giving staffs and pointy hats that yeah. you have in some armies. Sometimes wizards are like... 
big beefy characters or Smashy raid dudes. characters and stuff like that. I can like see that. this being kind of nice in like some Stormcast like wizards too. Where it's yeah. Like, oh well, hey, the, you know. the two that we have. Well, still. the two, yeah, the two that you still have. <laughs> but like you're minus one to hit, and it's like because it just says like attacks. Yeah. Like, so it also shooting for also which shooting. Is the bane of Nagash. I know I keep going back to him, but he's the wizard I built the most lists yeah. around that I intend on playing the most. Like yeah, you don't want Nagash to just take a bunch of rifle shots to the face in the first turn and die. No. Yeah, minus one to hit means that. You know, you're shooting me on fours now. They're fives, so you know, a little, little longer. I got that ward yeah. and everything. So you know, you set this up like maybe you're in the bottom of turn one. And you're like, ooh, I'll set these cogs up, make it so a minus one to hit. Yeah. And then, oh, all of a sudden it's uh, now we move into like turn two, and it's like, oh, let me flip these cogs. Let me crank send, cr- let me send my dudes out there. Yeah. Crank out the time. And, and then you can, can turn back time. And you can turn back time. Like speed up that's the time. All, that's you all can we pick can do. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. That's all we can do on YouTube. We, have, we can only do very, <laughs> very short song quotes yeah. now. Um, yeah, so that's pretty cool. I like I like those, um, and they're always and also wholly within twelve without any restriction on enemies. So if your wizard is already getting butt punched by somebody that charged in on them, you can you know, and they've somehow lived. You put this down. And slap at least, these cogs. Yeah, slap them cogs. Uh, next up is the Ether Void Pendulum. This was always a favorite of mine because it was simple, and I love. Love, love their explanation. And it went in a line. It went in a line, and people went, the pendulums go back and forth, and their official answer was, you don't know where the fulcrum is. It's really <laughs> tall. It's a really big... This thing, it's a really big a swing. Massive pendulum. That's my favorite justification for this ever. Uh, so it is cast on a six, and it is holy 12 outside of nine, as is tradition. Oh, uh, man. I got to scroll all the way down. The hard part is the PDF loads really slow, so I scroll, and then I have to wait for the page to load in like I'm doing dial-up. All right, the pendulum, which doesn't get a picture or art on its card. Look at all that empty space. How rude. That could have been... The thing I just had to scroll away from. Uh, eight inch move, six health, five up save, seven banishment. It is the pendulum swings. It cannot use the charger fight. In addition, when it moves, it must move in a straight line in either, either in the direction of which the tip of the pendulum is pointing or the opposite direction. So they finally said, all right, you, uh, you can pendulum with it. Sorry, guys. It was way funnier. You know what, Games Workshop? It was funnier when you stuck to the idea that it couldn't. I think so. But you were just, like, refused to admit that you were wrong. It was also a really fun little threat to put it just on the corner of the table and then just move. I did it with Nurgle a lot. I would do it, and I would put it on the corner of the table, and it's like, okay, if you run up at me, yeah, you might catch a couple of Plague Bearers in it, but, like, you'll also have this thing plowing into you on the next turn. So you kind of, if you knew the trajectory, you could really mess with people by setting it up on turn one and turn three. It's going straight into the objective they're trying to take. It was a fun little game. The scything blade is what its special thing is in the movement phase. You, this manifestation moves a distance up to its move. It passed through enemy models. We've seen a lot of this kind of thing. Um, pick three enemy units uh, that it passed through uh, to be the targets. Roll a d6 for each target on a two up, the number of moral damage equal to the roll. So boom, there again. You may roll a three. You may roll a spicy six, you know. And you may roll that one and get nothing. And you may roll, you'll probably roll a one on one guy and go, dang it, that's the one guy I needed to kill. <laughs> It's the one liberator with one wound less that I was trying to take out. What a jerk. What a turd. But uh, that's the pendulum. Pendulous, I would say. Finally, it's a Quicksilver Swords. Finally. It's a casting value of six. Uh, you set the Quicksilver Swords endless spell, hold it within 12 inches of the caster, invisible to them, and more than nine inches from all other enemy units. Yeah. So the Quicksilver Swords, they show up, and then they mislead you because you think they're actually going to be the real Quicksilver Swords, but then it turns out to be a boner joke, right? Correct. Yeah. That joke's like three years old, but it still bothers me. So the movement is There's eight. one guy at home that cackled at that. <laughs> Nobody like, else knows he just what went, I'm talking about. Heh, heh. Yeah. <laughs> and that was it. Uh, so it's a movement of eight, a health of six, a save of five, and a, and a seven banishment. It has an attack profile. It has 12 attacks, threes and threes, one rend, one damage, crits or mortal wounds. So Sweet. you're fishing for crits. You are fishing for crits. Yeah. Also, it has a passive, which is the dancing blades, and ward rolls cannot be made for damage points inflicted by this manifestation's attacks. So... If you, if you get that damage on through and you don't make that save... You're just going to... Yeah, you just you take just, the damage. You, you just don't, take you know, no, no No warden for you. And there's a lot of stuff that wards... Uh, they seem like not everybody has them, but the people that have them, a decent amount of their really, power is in them. Yeah, really bank on those so, things. So, yeah, like, we, we you know, even a six-up ward is pretty valuable now. So cutting out any ward, especially on an army, like, that only that has a ton of wards, like Night Haunt, you hit them with a flurry of attacks. Oh, you can't modify their save. Who cares what they're in? You hit them with 12 attacks. And then... They can't ward any of the damage. This thing is a chain rasp killer, basically. Pretty neat. Just murdering us on through. It's all it's all swinging swords. Yeah, I like it. I also like it because these were like the first three I painted because they're very easy to paint. So I know that I, I was like, yeah, I might as well use them. <laughs> I got these ready at the ready. And the fu- the last one, 
the, no, you, no, wait, no, that's no, all. Last one. Never mind. Sorry. Yeah. Mine has. It's confusing because it puts War Scrolls on different pages. Oh, okay. So those are your three uh, Etherwatt machineries. But what if I'm an orc player and well, I don't want to do any thinking and I don't want to do any spooking? I just want to yell and throw burning things at each other. Well, then maybe you'll want the Primal Energy. I'm in. But also, what does it have? Well, the Primal Energy has. You can summon a burning head. You can summon the always popular Emerald Life Swarm. Or you can summon Ravenix Gnashing Jaws. Yeah. So I'm going to take the Burning Head, because I've always liked this spell. Okay, it, go it for it. It for a while just kind of did the same thing that all of the other spells did, and then in the last uh, generation they were like, what if it was just a visual way to show a magic missile? Like, it just kind of went, ah, and then you picked it up off the table and did some damage. Uh, so it's casting value of 5, cheap, and it is wholly uh, within 12, outside of 9, as is the way that these always kind of work. This is what confused me, is it's on the same page as one of the other ones, so I was like, oh, it's next. Um, okay, the Burning Head, movement of 8, health 6, 6 up save, 6 up banishment. Uh, a little easier to get rid of. It has ranged weapon, burning breath, 10, uh, 10 inch range, d6 attacks, 2s and 3s, rend 2, damage 1, a bunch of stuff, uh, shoot in combat, anti war machine, plus 1 rend. And I remember, I think a couple of days ago, I was like, war machine, there's not many of those. And you just looked at me and went, uh, excuse me. <laughs> That's the most important parts of my army, a war machine. Also, you have, so you have war machines in a, a Stormcast. Yeah, yeah, weirdly. I yeah. know it's going to use them. But yeah, yeah. Possible. Yeah, there's a couple of war machines. Yeah, that, like, there there's a couple of things that are war machines that you don't think about, like that chariot. I would not have expected the chariot it's to be around in. now, man. I yeah, didn't know that two wheels on a bucket was a machine, but check, I guess so. Check your keywords. War yeah. machines back in, back in play. War machines back in play. Like they just recast in the Don Cheadle. So uh, that's pretty good. The melee weapons, so remember, shoots in combat. So if it's in combat, it's doing all this. Uh, 2d6, 2d6 or 2d6. Uh, twos to hit, three to wound, Rin two, damage one, another anti-war machine Rin. So, like, you want to put this thing into your Skaven opponent and have it just do smash around a lot and that kind of stuff. Just burn all the, it just burns all the metal up. Yeah. It's, got, it's a flaming head. Uh, it's really here's, hot. Here's what's really funny about it. It hurts itself. Um, it is burning up. Each time it uses a shoot ability after it's been resolved, allocate one damage point to the manifestation. It can't ward that. So it is kind of its own little self-timer. It, as it burns up, it loses its fire, but who cares? Like, you get a lot of use out of this thing. You're casting on a five. Yeah, why not? Shoot it out there. It's a cool-looking model, too. It's a Fre burning head. It's freaking red. Yeah, I like that. I'm happy that that guy got, that it's still useful, because I think, I think it's always been a cool spell. Yeah. Which one uh, do you want to take? I'm going to do Ravenex Gnashing Jaws next. Gnashing. It's a uh, seven to, It's a seven to cast. Uh, you set up uh, the Holy Within 12 Inches of the Caster, invisible to them, and more than nine inches from all enemy units. Oh boy, here's a profile for you. It's got 3d6 move. It's got 10 health. It's got 5 save. It's got a 7 banishment. It has an attack. It's got 10 attacks in melee. Uh, <laughs> an attack. And what an attack. <laughs> what an attack it is. Uh, it's forced to hit 2 to wounds, 1 rend, 1 damage, plus 1 damage on charges. Okay. Yeah. So pretty, pretty swanky. Not bad. Uh, but also, in any charge phase, it has a rabbiting hunger. And if this manifestation charged this turn, pick an enemy unit hold, uh, within one inch to be the target. <coughs> Bless you. Thank you. That's a callback from the first bit uh, of this episode. <laughs> that was an organic bit. <laughs> it was. Um, and then you roll ten dice, and for each five up, you inflict one mortal damage on that target. Okay. So not too shabby. So you charge in, you do two or three mortal wounds probably on average. Uh, then you attack, you do maybe, if you've charged, you you know maybe do another six damage average. Yeah. So you've done about ten damage with this thing. And if you're trying to banish it, uh, you don't. It doesn't you, do it. It's like it, doesn't, it doesn't happen. You just allocate six wounds to it instead. It just gets, it just eats it. Which, you know, yeah, if you do that it twice, it'll die. Goes, but, but and then still. it has a little burp, and then it's good to go. Yeah, I like it. I'm happy. Uh, it's it's problematic for me to keep scrolling up. So what's the Emerald Life Swarm cast on? <laughs> well, the Emerald Life Swarm is cast on a six. And I'm assuming wholly within 12? Indeed. And outside of nine? Indeed. Hey, yeah. My PDF keeps crashing every time I scroll up too fast. Fair enough. Um, so this is an eight-inch move. I've always loved this one because I played Nurgle. And you just stick this on the butt of your Rodigus and just walk him around, and he never died. But what does it do now, Zach? Well, you move it eight inches. Mm -hmm. as a five health, seven up banishment, and a six up save. Has swarming bites, which is... Bizarre. Uh, 2d6, 4s fours and 4s, fours, no rend, 1 damage, anti-infantry, 1 rend. All right, so you know, it's got a, a nice little, like, Griffhound level of just flurry of attacks, maybe. Um, what it, uh, it heals 3, this manifestation, at the end of the turn. So it's like, hey, I'm going to take some of that healing for me now, guys. You know, I've been giving it out to everybody else. Daddy gets some healing now. And then it's movement phase. You pick a friendly unit within 3, and it heals 3. So it's It heals 3, you heal 3, 
And then I'm going to deal three damage possibly to you. Yeah, and then I'm going to be a bunch of little Nurglings basically worth of attack. So it kind of almost is even more fun in Nurgle now. Because Are you it's just paint this like as a bunch of Nurglings. You, I have seen a lot of really cool kit matches where people do like a bunch of Nurglings. Somebody did uh, a bunch of, oh, what was it? It's like little rats. Oh. But they were like little green ether rats and stuff because it's for the Skaven player. So like I've seen people do some cool stuff with this. I, I will say the model of the original spell is a little like, nah, it's all right. Compared to all of the other ones, this is one of the ones I was like, nah, it's okay. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. And that's it for Primal Energy. That's it for it. So that's uh, Primal. Now, what if I want to have... I think this next collection is great because it has the spells that I think I just never painted. Because, boy, did one of them just always be a thing that I didn't want to have to try to figure out. Because it used to be like, if the black ball is touching a guy, but the white ball is not touching a guy, then he takes this. But if they're both touching him, then he takes this. And it's like, I don't need to... This is confusing. Well, then you'd be looking in the Twilight Sorceries. Yeah. It's not Twilight. It's Twilight. <laughs> Twilight. The Twilight Sorceries. <laughs> Twilight Sorceries. That's the guy that hung out with uh, Bobo, uh, uh, Jabba the Hutt, right? Yeah. He was a Twilight? Yeah. Everybody, What's funny is I, that hurt me to joke because I know it's a Twilight. <laughs> <laughs> and I know his name is Bib Fortuna, and I can tell you a lot about him. But I had to be stupid on that joke. But don't you think at home, I do not know who Bib Fortuna is. I know who Salacious Crumb is, motherfucker. Don't come for me, Star Wars fans. You don't have to ju you don't have to justify your Star Wars love to me. Man. I don't. I, I don't have to. Star Wars fans have plenty of other things to go for. <laughs> besides me, at this so, point, so mad. This mad all time. Mad. Yeah, luckily our community is not at all a community that no. gets upset about uh, stuff. Not, not grog, not, not at all. No, not about. at all. No, no, no. no. <laughs> crazy. So the three spells that you have in here, you could have an umbral spell portal. You could have the Geminids of Ulrich. <laughs> you nailed that. Perfect. <laughs> Pretty sure I, I that was perfect pronunciation. It was, it was. Or you can do a prismatic palisade. Yeah. Do you want to take one first? Sure. Grab one, go for How it. How about the Umbral Spell Portal, which has a casting value of seven? Yeah, yeah. And you set it up only within 18 inches of the caster invisible to them, and an Umbral Spell Portal has two parts that must be set up within nine inches of each other. Which is kind of weird. If you think about yeah. it, it's not very long range anymore. Not very, not yeah, you can no much. longer just put it up and do the, the Nagash touch of death all the way across the table <laughs> on turn just, one. You can't, just poke, you can't just finger poke a dude and somebody yeah. through a mirror. You can't just finger a guy through a mirror anymore. What's with what? this America here? Right. <laughs> what is happening? Uh, there's what no is the energy on this, on this thing? show? <laughs> it is a five up save. It is eight health. I'm just going to power through here. Uh, six up <laughs> banishment. Uh, it's passive. It has multiple parts. Uh, so if you one, if you kill it, both pick up both parts. Yeah. Right. Here's what it actually does. In your hero phase, you have an arcane passage. You declare. You pick a friendly wizard within three inches I of this declare. manifestation to be the target. The effect. The time. The next time the target uses a non-summon spell ability this phase, add one to the casting value of that spell. When picking targets for that spell, you can measure the range and visibility from either part of this manifest manifestation instead for, or from the caster. And your opponent can measure range and visibility to either part of this manifestation instead of to the caster for the purposes of the unbind ability. Yeah. So it just extends the range of your spelly bits. It gives your, it gives your wizard a little extra range. You yeah. know? And a little extra oomph, too. Let's not forget that. You add one to the casting value, so that means the gash is like, hey, what's up? I got a plus five to cast. Like, even if it doesn't really change the range on anything, you're going to force a spell to go through if you have, like, him or one of the other big guys that just gets a plus to it. You should not be forcing things through a mirror. Oh, you got it. you're going through. It's glass everywhere, man. Um, and, like, yeah, it, it, the range is far diminished. Uh, you can no longer sling things all the way across it. Uh, but, you know, if you've got some pretty good damage spells. Slinging stuff. Yeah, you just sling you just stuff through a mirror. Sling stuff through a mirror, yeah. Reflect it. Do, uh, do like Mirror Master and be kind of not really important until everyone realizes he's actually really dangerous because he could just put you in a mirror. How do you get out? It's a great question. Yeah. I don't know. I don't, think, I don't know. You got a phase? Right. I guess so. Yeah. Be, be written out by plot, maybe? <laughs> plot armor. Hooray! <laughs> be the Flash and it's your show and your name's on the title card. Uh, so, Zach, would you like to take the Yemenids of Ulchish? <sighs> I guess so, because this is the one that I still... The, I have one spell I've never I, painted. I, I believe in you. It's, you can take it's this. It's the it's, it's a seven to cast. I'll, I'll make this Oh, thank you. Oh, I already scrolled up. I yeah, was... no, I'm making this easy for you, man. Thank it's you. seven to cast. You set up the Yemenids of Ulchish, wholly within 12 inches of the caster, visible to them, and more than nine inches from all enemy units. What do these kids do? Let me tell you about these pendulous, veiny balls that you get to throw at your opponent. <laughs> It's the, weirdest, be it's the weirdest thing to put on the table. You know, I've never painted them, but now that I have so many flesh tone washes, you I, th have I think to. I know what I'm going to do. You have yeah. to paint yeah. them. I have to do them like this. Uh, so you have an 8-inch move, 6-up save, 6-up banishment, and 8 health. I read that backwards in the way we've done every single one for yes, some reason. Did, but, but hey, but look, let's go around the show. Yeah. Uh, it has the Tendrils of Light and Shadow, 4 attacks, 3s threes and 3s, threes, 1 rend, damage D3. Uh, that's, that's it. That's it. Um, but it has multiple parts. Um, when you destroy one, you destroy the other. 
Uh, however, each part does get its own attack profile. So you are attacking with both of them, and they don't have to necessarily attack the same thing. They just have to stay within nine inches of each other. Because, look, trust me, fellas, you stretch them out too far, you're going to feel it. Um, and the passive tendrils... Wait, like Batman and everybody. Yeah, oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. It's goop raining. Uh, you tendrils of light and shadow. Boy, does that joke even work outside of America, and also outside of people that saw Waiting in 2007? Like, I don't think so. I, I like that you had to go back to it, where you were like, wait a second. I don't think anybody... Yeah. <laughs> I, look, if you, I'm just saying Ryan Reynolds is very popular in the in he is. In, in, in things right now, and he's, I just want to point out that he was in that movie. He's so popular. If you pull up that movie on Hulu, he's on the cover. He's not the main character he's not at all. The main character he's at all. barely in it. It's actually uh, what's his face? Dane Cook is sort of the main character. Dane Cook's not the main character. Uh, and more he's, so than Ryan Reynolds. He's one of the cooks in that show. Yeah, but he's, he's more. If you, I remember seeing this movie. Unfortunately, I remember it really well for some reason. Well, Waiting was a great movie. It's all right. That's it's okay. Fine. I think. It's uh, it's what's his nuts? It's uh, Jake Long. Yeah, is the, main, is the main guy. He's yeah, Justin but also Long. Justin, Justin Long, Long, not yeah. Jake Long. But it's early on Justin Long where he has the personality of like I'm just kind of in this movie, but I don't really have a character. Per well, yeah, because he's like he's this, he's doing the straight man bit in yeah. a room full of crazy people. In a room full of everyone else who's a comedian. Yeah. yeah. Um. Anyway, that's the that's our review Ooh. of waiting. Is everyone a comedian in that in that movie? I wouldn't say Dan Cook's comedian. I was, about, I was, <laughs> like, I was it's like that's a little bit of a stretch. A, Purpo a purported comedian <laughs> a of the time. It's a, it's a little bit of a Batman Which, It's a little bit of a 10-inch stretch, yeah. It's going to break <laughs> your gymnasts. Yeah. Um, the other passive they have, if you've forgotten what we were talking about, is uh, enemy units cannot use commands while within three inches of either part of it. Mm. That's pretty cool because you can get it near a hero or someone that you need to be using some say, big command trick. No commands for you. Yeah, just turn them off. Just get, get them rubber mouth on there, and they're just like, oh, God, uh, no. Uh, stop. I don't want to do that. Uh, yeah. uh, I feel violated, which you should. You should absolutely you should absolutely yeah. feel violated. Just as much Never as you go have... to the restaurant and waiting. <laughs> oh, no, no, that's you're gonna get some from under. Um, so the last one is the the often overlooked prismatic palisade, which used a to be a personal favorite of this show. It used to be really really good, and they have kind of nerfed it every edition since. And we've been sad I'm every sad, time because like we've it. always loved the prismatic yeah, palisade. It's neat. It's, it's, a, it's a, a big fun, wall. It's a, the big old icy chunk wall. Just put a wall yeah. of light up, and then I didn't paint it very well, so it doesn't look very good. But that's okay. But I don't care. Because it was the first thing. Because then it got bad and I never used it, so no one ever knew that. <laughs> so, it was, so it was fine. So what's but this it thing? A, it's a cast of seven. Uh, you set up the prismatic palisade, holding within 18 inches of the caster invisible to them, so it's got just range, baby. Yeah. And you can drop this sucker directly in front of your opponent. Just put you it wish. right on their... Just right up, just right up in their... Right in their long gun. No movement, eight health, four up save, seven banishment. Here's what it does. It is a passive. This manifestation cannot be targeted by shooting attacks. Okay. In addition, <laughs> a unit cannot be targeted by shooting attacks if it is impossible to draw a straight line from a model in the attacking unit to a model in the target unit without that line passing across this manifestation. So I would like cover. to point out that it is cover, but also, if I read this right, it doesn't say anything about flying. No, if I I also noticed that, and I thought, maybe I I'm just not reading this correctly. That may just be because the prismatic palisade is actually as tall as forever. Yeah, it, the model is not representative of the lore, where it is light that comes out of the ground in a big wall. So it's like, yeah, you can't go around it necessarily. It's light. It's a, it's a, uh, it's a big spotlight beacon that comes up. Yeah. So since there's no, like, mention of flying, like, that it just is ignored, I think it just does actually affect flying as far as shooting attacks. Yeah, you can't target. Can't I'm target. gonna say that that's the Atlanta Warhammer ruling, and if a TO tells us otherwise, we'll politely say, okay, sorry, we didn't, we're not very and good at this And then I game. will go, wait a second, that seems ridiculous, and then uh, we'll demand a rules clarification by Mr. James Workshop himself. Yeah, we will call James Workshop, whose number I have saved in my phone. We have him on speed it's three. dial. <laughs> it's just, it's just, just a number th three. Just three. Yeah. yeah. You just say it three, talk. Yeah. And he goes, this is James Workshop. Hello, mate. <laughs> <laughs> That's, oh, I'm James Workshop. That's uh, that's exactly that's, what he sounds like. Yeah. Wow, that's I didn't yeah. realize this what James Workshop said. Nailed like, that dude, Nottingham accent. It was perfect. I like, really, I really felt like I was there. Like I, I was in the pub next to I, him. I wanted to take you there. Yeah, uh, magically with my with your perfect, perfect UK accent. Yeah, UK accent. Oi. I've never. <laughs> just, Oi, let's go I'm down to the pub. I'm James Workshop. I'm playing some Warhammer. <laughs> Can you do Michael Cocaine, but as an Australian? I know his name is Michael Caine, but like Michael Caine as an Australian. Oh, I oh, good guy. You just don't say any words. It's just syllables oh, fall off. I'm Michael Caine. Oh, I'm Caine. Uh, 
Yeah, the energy on this show is weird. That's for it's sure. got real strange. All right, so what's your favorite lore? Because mine, I still stick with mine. It's Spooky Doogies. Oh, I, it's, I think it's, it's, it's the it's the cog. It's the one that has the cogs and the friggin' it's it's all the machinery stuff, man. Of course, yeah. it's gonna be. I mean, it's good. Like yeah, it's I, I think that's probably. I think the, my second favorite is probably the one with the uh, life swarm in it because I, it's Nurgle and I just gotta do what I've always done, yeah, which no, is just very, put it on the great thing and very, walk around. Very handy. I gotta say though, I do. Re I mean, I really like the swords. Yeah, like the swords are really good. And that might just like wind up being like just endless for me going forward. And you know what you're not doing? You're not having to commit to one spell and pay 50 points for it and hope that you go up against something that that spell works for. Yeah. You get a little variety, and you also have all your spells in your book, so you have you know or your your I have well, a, not book I have necessarily. Have a range, but. a wide variety. Yeah, you've got some stuff that works, and you've got a lot of they. A lot of what was spells is now on abilities, so you're not necessarily like, oh, I'm missing this spell. Go read your war scrolls. It might actually be hidden somewhere in a different ability. I really like that they've let us do this lore thing because this means that, like, as someone who has a bunch of these, I can see what a bunch of them do without having to feel like, God, okay, I want to see if a Purple Sun works in this list, but also I don't want to bring it and then not be able to cast it and have spent 80 points on it, and I'm just sitting there going, if I had had six Griff Hounds for 80 points, I could have done a lot more work with those Griff Hounds. Yeah. So, like... I like the I like the changes to this. I say Wild West it up, man. But that's me. I've never cared about game balance. I want to just be a More toys fun on game. the table. Yeah, more more toys on the table. More big smashy things. Uh, you have less heroes per list usually. Uh, I've noticed that in like my Stormcast list, I might have like two or three heroes, which is wild. I used to have five usually because it's like I want them to all do very specific stuff. So you have probably less wizards, less chance to cast them. But you know, try them out. There's no reason not to. They're free. That's about as cheap as you can get. Yeah, and you're you're sending the spells back and forth. Yeah, yeah you gotta. I mean, you have to spend a spell slot in order to cast the damn thing. So, you know, if you're freaking bringing wizards and you're like, well, I got some wizards, and now maybe, you know, what's nice is you won't have. You're probably less likely to have these scenarios where you go, ah, oh, man, I have like two wizards. I only have like. And they have four spells combined between them, but really only have two that are you like worthwhile. Yeah, one is uh, it's a healing spell, and oh, I don't need it this turn because I went first. Oh well, I guess I'll throw out a manifestation instead because yeah. I, I always brought the like healing stuff for Stormcast, and it's like, well, it's first turn, I, I don't need it. Yeah, you're not just gonna stick like no, I'm just gonna throw Mystic a spell Shield out. or freaking hold an arcane bolt that you'll forget to use. Yeah, now you can actually put like a spell on the table, and you'll remember because it's on the table. And knowing, uh, so you obviously at home you've gone, but wait, what about all the faction specific spells? We're, We're gonna do those in them. the factions. <laughs> We're not going to get into those on this. This is They are too nuanced because they are in the factions. So it's they like, belong to the factions. And what might be good, it, what might seem like it's bad just universally, is good because that faction needs that thing. So we're going to do those in the faction packs. And we're going to start churning through those. You're about to go out of town, so I guess I'll try to do the Skaven with somebody. Uh, that sounds like a really weird dance. We're going to do, <laughs> do the, the Skaven. Skaven. You do, put, do, do, when do, your do, arms do, are crocking and your do, knees do, are chittering. What would the Skaven dance be? Skaven! It's, it's rocking the TikToks. I tell you what. We're gonna do it's Skaven. called the gnaw hole. <laughs> <laughs> you take your tail, and then you wrap it around another <laughs> tail, and then you wrap <laughs> it around another tail, and then you wrap <laughs> it around another <laughs> tail, and then you wrap it around another tail, and then you wrap it around... Another tail. This is how Rat King's get bored. <laughs> <out. laughs> That's where I was going to get to. But I needed like 15 more of that to just, like, I was waiting for you to just cut me off. I, I like, had to, to stop. because I have to I have to go to the bathroom. And I didn't want to be waiting that whole time. Because I drained this purple sun, I mean monster, the whole way this time. I would have kept that bit going the entire time that you were going to the bathroom. I know, I kind of wanted just to just, just, like, leave. just kept going. I can always loop it. I can, we can always do a family guy. I'm just going to loop it ten times and just try to find the time where it's not funny, and then it becomes hilarious <laughs> for a few seconds, and then that's when you stop doing Perfect. it. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Well, uh, that's all that. So, that's hey. That's all. Thanks, thanks for, for listening. Li thanks for listening. Thanks to all of our new listeners. Yeah. Thanks to our sponsors. Thanks for uh, some of you left uh, five-star reviews without comments, which is awesome. Well, we, still, we still love them, but if you leave us comments, we'll read them. Uh, yeah, I we checked. Will. We didn't we'll, have any we'll, new we'll weird read. ones. Leave we'll us a weird them. YouTube comment or something like that. We'll We're on there, too. Read those comments. Tell yeah. us how much you love us. Ta or, tell how me, much tell you me how sexy I am. Tell us how much tell you how love much... that one commercial for Llama Juice and yeah, why you're me... just trying to find where that is in the episode tell, every tell time. Me, tell, me, tell me more about that Llama Juice. Tell me, tell me more about that Llama Juice. Tell me, tell me more about it. Tell me about your schnackles. I'll give you some soul snaring. <laughs> show, me, show them your schnackles, baby. I can't even... <laughs> I, I, it's, I feel like Sylvester the Cat when I'm trying to say that. <laughs> Shuffering schnuckles. <laughs> so, for the Atlanta Warren Podcast, I'm Josh. And I'm Zach saying, I take a shit on the equator the size of a crater and make government officials breathe harder than Darth Vader. Yeah.